for the life of me, I can't remember not knowing her. So it's hard for me to pin down the exact moment that we met. I think it might have been, in fact, I'm sure it was at an AM show, but which exact year, I'm not sure. And the funny thing about it is, is that she knew who I was. She knew who my partner, Don Lombardi, was. She knew everything about, seemed like everybody. Uh, suddenly, we were friends. It seemed like, you know, you could, you could talk to her. She was such an approachable person. And always so upbeat and kept dragging around this thing with a million cameras hanging from herself and this luggage, and she just got in from Phoenix, and she came from the airport, and you know, and I, everybody's always wanting to help her, and she really didn't want a lot of help. She was one of those girls who just did it all on her own, and she, she was very self-sufficient in, in so many ways, but also so needing to have good friends, and, and, and I felt the same way. I mean, there are so many people that you meet in this industry, there's a lot of them, and fantastic people, and we're all lucky to be in this industry. But I can count the real, true friends. And by God, she was really one of them. You know, a lot of the guys that are really good friends of mine, I call them, hey, my pally. Pally is an endearment that you get from working in Philadelphia, and those big old lunk and union guys, they call each other pally. That's a nice endearment. And the for a girl, she was, a pally of mine, and she knew that, and we just would hang out together. And then I went out, wound up going on the road for a period of time, and lo and behold, we'd come through Phoenix, or we'd go through a town, and there she'd be on the edge of the stage taking pictures. She'd go, hey, how you doing? i say, hey, pally. And it was like a, a, a friendship with somebody that, that was fantastic. It lasted so long, and it lasts to this day. Uh, think about her all the time. And um, she was the one, you know, I'd come in and off the road, or I'd see her at a show, see her at a PASIC show, or she'd be at a photo shoot with Motley Crue or somebody in town, and Thaler always had her taking pictures, and she knows everybody in the industry. Everybody. But she'd come through town, and we'd, you know, find a way to go have a dinner together or something, and... Um, We'd be talking about what I was up to and things I was inventing and stuff I was doing. And she was always fascinated by, of course, the drum industry. And she'd ask real cool, pertinent questions about stuff we were doing. And then I'd talk about how I didn't understand a lot of the music today. And she'd go, what do you mean you don't understand it? And I'd say, well, I don't get that hate your mother, hate your mother, hate your mother music. I just don't get it. You know? And she'd say, well, which mother? Come on, you be kidding me. She'd say, no, 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 no. You're really not cool, John. It's so uncool. So what I'm going to do for you, and she'd go home, and she'd made her little, played all her little records and made tapes for me, and she said, you got to listen to these guys. Now, it's hate your mother, but it's a nice mother. And uh, she'd have these little buzzwords and funny little stories. But she, she said, you know, you just got to get hip, John, because you're just not hip. You're not cool. I'll just never forget her telling me these things. And lo and behold, all the people she was talking about turned into be giants in their music industry. And of course, I'm divulging the fact that I didn't know who the heck they were. But she helped me. And she was always concerned about whether I would know or say the right things at a show or in front of a group of people. She's always there clicking off pictures. You know, we were together uh, in Nashville one time and, and Larry London had passed away. He was a dear friend of mine, and uh, they asked me to, to say a little something. So there she is. I'm, I'm just about ready to cry, but there's that lens, and she's click, 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 and and she. I looked over at her like you know, almost like stop it, and she go, do the right thing. Come on, say the right stuff. You know, coaching you along, because you know, public speaking isn't one of my fortes. You know, so what I do, I knock on wood for a living. But she was always like there as a coach, as a friend, coaching you on, doing the right thing. Wonderful, wonderful supporter of stuff I did. And therefore, I became interested in her life as well. The pictures she would take, the stuff that would go into the magazines, 
the, the people she knew. She, she had everybody sorted out in this industry. She, I gotta do this over here tonight, gotta do that for this company over here tonight, I gotta shoot that event, uh, dragging around her cameras, all this stuff. I always had time to go have a dinner or something. It was a traditional thing we always did. Dinner stocks tonight? Yep, dinner, eight o'clock, be there, you know. One of those deals, and in the middle of all her busyness and the wonderful things and the people she touched, she always had time for everyone. And always had a lovely, wonderful smile, and such a beautiful woman, and always knew everybody's name, everybody's wife's name, and her children's name. I mean, she just made a point of being that kind of warm and friendly person that uh, we all love very much. And this industry is, is, is thankful for all the things that she's done for all of us. And, um, you know, we, we would uh, I sometimes go to Frankfurt, Germany, and lo and behold, I was there doing something, throwing a dinner for some artists, and here this click, 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 I turn around, and there she is. I said, what are you doing in Frankfurt? Well, she bummed a ride with somebody who's staying at some hotel, is borrowing a room from Louise King or someone like that, you know. She has all these friends and connections, and we all just love her. We love her dearly. And uh, this is a better industry because of who she is. You know, I, I think of Lissa every day, and um, some people could just kind of say that. Of course, we all miss somebody, but I do think of her every day, and one of the reasons I, ha I can afford that luxury to do so is that her sister Mary said that when she was putting things in order in her office, in her house, she had, there was a picture. She had a picture of uh, Chad Smith and her, you know, she had a picture of me and her, she had a pi picture of many of us that she, that she loved as friends. And um, so she, she said, hey, this picture is right below this fish. And this fish's name is Herman. And Herman was caught by Lissa and her father went on a, a father-daughter outing in Alaska. And um, she caught this big, big fish, rainbow trout. It's like 14 pounds or something like that. And anyways, there's, she had it mounted and there's a plaque, you know, that says that she caught it and where she caught it and all that. And uh, Mary said, what am I going to do with Herman? What will ever become of Herman? And I said, I'll take Herman. So Herman hangs in my office. And every day when I'm looking at, the, I have a monitor and Herman hangs above that monitor. The monitor tells me where we're at, you know, with our production in the, in the factory. So I'm looking at that all the time, and I look up at Herman, and I think of her, and I say, you know, I'm taking care of Herman for you, and I'm glad to do so. I'm proud to do so. I'm not much of an outdoorsman, so people know that can't be your fish. I said, no, that's Lissa's fish. I'm just taking care of it.